Good morning. Welcome to Salome Missionary Baptist Church. We're here to praise the Lord this morning. I don't know about you, but I feel him moving in my soul this morning. I'm so glad to be here among you, among you, the living and not the dead. And I ain't talking about physical death. I'm talking about spiritually. I'm glad I'm around folks who are alive in the spirit. Because God is good and worthy to be praised. Amen. Let's open with prayer. Father, we thank you for another day. A day we've never seen before. We've been privileged, Father, to be among the saints, Father. We pray now that your Holy Spirit will come among us. Make us alive and well, Father. To be able to tell of your grace and mercy. To speak your word, Father. To sing your praise. Anoint the ushers and everyone in this building, Father. That we might be acceptable in your sight, Father. We pray for those that are sick among us, Father. That you touch them with that finger of love, Father, that bring, br brings us up out of our sick beds, Father, that we might sing your praise, Father. And for those that are bereaved, Father, give them that comfort right now, Father, that they can continue on, Father. We pray right now that this service brings you glory and honor, Father. Thank you, Father, for another day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're glad to have our senior choir with us here this morning. Amen. They're going to come with a selection followed by our announcements by Sister Charlotte Timberlake. And then we'll come back from Philippians chapter 11. Amen. See you. 
to our visitors on behalf of Reverend Wayne Johnson and the Salon Missionary Baptist Church family. We extend a heartfelt welcome to you and we hope you come back and worship with us again. Please keep the sick and shut-in members in your prayers and Magdalene Downey is in Duke Regional. The announcements are as follows. Bible study is held each Wednesday at 12 noon and we will have it this week. A Zoom Bible study is held every other Wednesday night at 7 p.m. The next one is scheduled for Wednesday, July 28th. Don't forget to drop off your tithes and offerings in the vestibule as you leave today. And if you would like to pay your tithes and offerings via credit card, you may do so immediately after service. Just come to the office. Do we have anyone celebrating a birthday or anniversary from last Monday through today? If so, would you please stand? Birthday or anniversary? Right, 50, 56 years, right? <laughs> okay. Lois and Travis Parker, anniversary. Uh, July 17th, 56 years. And also Carl's birthday, Carl Smith, Deacon Carl Smith's birthday was July 13th, uh, which was what, last Tuesday, I think. May the Lord shower each of them with blessings. Our thought for today is, it is not our abilities that God desires, but our availability he wants. This will conclude the announcements for this morning. Thank you. friends hear you call his name Jesus will love you and when the time has come to die So why don't you pick up your rugged cross and walk along with the Lord before your life is too far gone? If your friends deny the truth and they say he can't help you, don't believe them Only God can remove your sins Why don't you put your trust in him Jesus, he loves you If there's any shadow of doubt Almighty God face the one who really made you 
You can run and you can hide. Almighty God's got a shelter to find each and every one. And when you stand in front of the throne, you will have to stand. So why don't you pick up your rugged cross and walk along with the Lord before your life is too far gone. So why don't you pick up your rugged cross and walk along with the Lord before your life it's too far gone so why don't you pick up your rugged cross and walk along with the lord before your life is too far I'm trying to write that down. <laughs> Why don't you pick up the rugged cross? Amen. Amen. Philippians chapter 2, starting at verse 1. If there, if there be, therefore, any consolation in Christ, if any comfort in love, if any fellowship of the spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being formed in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Amen. <clears throat> you may be seated. Father, I stand before your people one more time. I ask now that you be in our midst, that you remove Wayne out of the way, and that your word reach those who are here and those who might hear us over the airways, Father. We ask now that your Holy Spirit fill this place that we might see you and you alone. <coughs> In Jesus' name, amen. 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 <coughs> This morning, I want to talk about being like Christ. As I was preparing myself, I came upon this epistle of Paul. And I had to look back and think about what he was going through when he wrote these words of encouragement to the people of Philippi. Paul was in prison, mistreated, hated by many, and wanted to be put to death by some. But he still had words of encouragement for the children of God. 
here we find him talking about Jesus and how Jesus laid down his royal robes and became a man for us. How he came to sacrifice himself that we might become the children of God. And I thought about it. How many today are willing to be that sacrifice? How often do we sacrifice ourselves, sacrifice our time, our belongings to get the gospel out, to speak a good word to someone? Pardon me. <coughs> I've tickled. Here Paul speaks about fulfilling his joy. His joy was that they would become more like Jesus. And as I get older, the more I want to look more like Jesus. And becoming more like Jesus causes me to look at others differently. I start seeing things in people, hoping things for people, praying things for people, because that's what Jesus would do. I think of the stories we hear of Jesus walking through towns and villages and how people would come to him and would ask to be healed. <coughs> But the thing is, how often do we ask for the gift and not to be in fellowship with the giver? Too many people today always are looking for the healing, for the deliverance, but not looking for the one who can give it. They just won't give me, give me, give me. Instead of I give away whatever it is that I have that's keeping me from being with Jesus. Amen. We're such a me too society now that we look at others and we fall into jealousy and envy over what they have that we strive to have what they have and not thank God that they do have what they have. <clears throat> Mm. Here in verse three, he says, let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. When you walk past others and you see the condition that they are in, it should cause you to want to pick them up if they're below you and uh, help them to reach that status that you know God has for them. Yes. As I get older, I know my steps are getting shorter. Yes. I can't run with the boys or yes. play the ball like I used to. Yes. Some things I have to put aside yes. Yes. and just appreciate what I do have now. Yes. I woke up this morning. Yes. I was able to put my own clothes on. Yes. I appreciate that. Yes. I remember when I used to just jump up out to bed, but yes. right now I sort of just sit up <laughs> and stretch yes. before I get out to bed. Yes. But I appreciate what I have. He says, let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. Can you imagine the mind of Christ when he walked through the villages and he saw the conditions that the people were in? You know, you read in the scripture how he rode upon the donkey on his way to Jerusalem. And when he saw the city, 
one of the shortest verses in the scriptures. It says, he wept. I can understand that. When you see the conditions of this world today, we should be weeping because sin is running rampant and people don't understand and their, their minds have been clouded with the success and the, the, the things of this world that they're longing to have, but it won't bring them joy. You can only find that joy in God. When you have peace with God, you really have joy. So as I was looking at this today, trying to prepare myself, I wondered what would it take for us to be more like Jesus? With suffering? Well, we've seen that when things happen, people run to the church. But when things get better, they leave the church. So that doesn't get them closer. It takes something on the inside, changing a, a relationship of love that connects us together. Oftentimes in the scripture, they speak of marriage and in comparison to that connection. And after being married to Helen for, what is it going on now, 44? 43. 43? October. October? Okay. <laughs> Life without parole. But uh, <laughs> after being married that long, there are some things that we go through that we don't even have to mention. We can look at each other. Well, it should be the same thing with us and God. He knows your heart. There's some things I don't even have to voice to him. I just look up and I know he's looking down on me. And when I shake my head, sometimes I feel him. I feel him moving. So I know I've got that connection with him. And see, that connection draws me closer to him. Because in the times of trouble, mm -hmm. I can feel him. Yeah. And that's what we need. We need to be so connected to him that when we feel sorrow, he feels sorrow. I, I remember the scripture said that when Jesus hung on the cross, said that the sun refused to shine. Mm -hmm. And in my mind, it was as if God said, I can't watch this. I can't watch my son die for them. And he said, but I'll be with him, but I can't watch this. And when he said it is finished, the son came out because all power, God said, I'll raise him up again. And see, that's the promise we have. That throughout this life, no matter what we go through, in the end, if we hold on to Jesus, he said he'd be there for us. And he will raise us up and give us new life. So what have you got to lose? You know, I heard somebody say something to this effect that there's a difference between one who believes and one who doesn't believe. I, as a believer, believe that when I die, that God will pick me up. A non-believer says, no, there's no God. Who has the better chance in the end? If I die and there is nothing, then I die. But if the unbeliever dies and there is a God, then he's got to answer. I've been forgiven. He hasn't. 
He's got more to lose because I got to gain. I'm going to gain eternal life. He's going to lose. So why don't you take the better odds? It's to be with God than to be out there by yourself. You can't do it by yourself. You've got to have God on your side. Here we see Paul as a prisoner, still encouraging people to grab hold of God. And we as a people now, we're afraid to say anything to anybody while we got this freedom that we have. What's up with that? It's, the scripture tells us it's going to come a day when we won't be allowed to speak about Jesus. So while you got the opportunity, you better do it now. Tell those around you, I've got a savior. His name is Jesus. Because I want to be there and I want to look around at others there. Here it talks about doing, having, uh, esteem others better than yourselves. I want each and every one of you to be there. And I don't want to have that on my conscience that I could have told you and I didn't. I want to be able to say, yeah, we, we're going to sing and praise God together. I don't want to be saying, oh, no, she ain't going to make it or he's not going to make it. No, I want you there. Because if you're there, then it's like a family reunion. It's like us being together. You know, you long to be back in the building just to fellowship. How much greater will it be to be in the kingdom? You know, we might long to be back in the building, but there's a better place in this building. There's a better place in this building. And if we live right and honor God, he says, that he's got a place for us. And it's undescribable. So why not live like Jesus? Doing good where you can. Feeding the hungry. Giving medical aid to those in need. Touching lives in such a way that they come to see God in you. You see, that's the whole thing. I, I heard a preacher this morning talked about why Moses was not allowed into the promised land. Basically, it was because he took the glory when he struck the rock. God said, speak to the rock. And Moses struck the rock. It put the emphasis on the man doing it instead of on God doing it. I want God to get the glory. If I come, if somebody calls and says, pray for this sick person, yeah, I'm going to pray for them. I don't have to go put my hand on them. I can just speak like Jesus did. And that way, I don't have to be present. I won't get no glory for it. God will get the glory. It won't be, Reverend jo call Reverend Johnson, call Reverend Johnson. No, call God. You might have me pray with you, but we want to give God the credit for it. Because I don't want nobody to put me on those pedestals and here I go standing before God. God says, oh, you're a little God? No, no, Lord, I, that ain't me. You get the glory. You get the honor. I want you to get all the praise. I want to be more like Jesus who humbled himself. That's the thing. In order to reach people, I might have sweep the floors. Can you imagine if there was an accident in the, in the sanctuary or in the, in, the fel in the vestibule and maybe something was spilled? How many are going to walk by and say, call the janitor, call the janitor, instead of saying, let me help? Amen. Amen. Sometimes you got to humble yourself and be a servant so that others can see God in you. You got to be willing to take off that pride and scrub floors so that others can see God in you. See, it's beyond pride. Because you know what I found out? I just visited the nursing home this past Monday. 
Pride goes when you can't do for yourself. You, 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 all that's out the window. Mm -mm. Pride is just selfishness. But when I humble myself and say, let me be of service to you, that's when you can be lifted up. God said, no, come on in. When you go in, take the lower seat and I will raise you up. Don't always walk in like I am somebody. Go in before God. Use me, Lord, for your service. Thank you, Father, for this day. Thank you for your word. Father, as we come to the end of what I've prepared, we pray that your spirit will work in your people. And the things that I've said, Father, if it was anything wrong, Father, you, you know how to fix it. Speak to their hearts, Father. Make them worthy servants of you, Father that we all might see one another in glory, Father. Thank you for this opportunity. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. The choir is gonna give us another selection, then we'll have the benediction. So satisfied, I am so satisfied with my say, Savior. He means more to me than anything, anything that this world could have
soul's passion is the fact he gave his life for me. It's so good to know he cares for me. I'm so satisfied. I am so satisfied. I am so satisfied with myself. satisfied with your Savior. I'm so satisfied with my Savior. Thank you, Senior Choir, for that song. As we prepare to leave this amount of privilege, I pray that you would keep our sick and shut in in your prayers. Those in the nursing facilities and in the hospitals. Let us look to the Lord to be dismissed. Father, we thank you for another day. We praise you for your Holy Spirit who lives within us, who walks beside us, who speaks peace to our souls. Father, we pray now that as we go forward in the days to come, that we walk closer and closer to you. Hold our hands, O oh Lord, when we stumble. Thank you, Father. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling. Be glory, honor, dominion, and power forever. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.